Denon DNC640, John, it'll play just about any kind of disk or file you can throw at it through its network connection. It'll rip files out to a network. You've got various outputs. Um, look, from my perspective in live production, I like the idea that I can throw a CD in and then when I want the track, I hit the play button and I have audio. This is my big reservation with things that do DVDs mm. is you hit go and it and doesn't. And you wait forever. And as you say, with DVDs or DVD players, it, it's like hard these days to get a dedicated CD player. And this is one of the family. This is the, the top of the line in the family. You'd expect it to do absolutely everything. Which and it does. It does. What it doesn't do is do all those things in a way that is intuitive and usable. So, for example, if you put this into a studio and you put a CD into it and you press the play button, it will do exactly that. And uh, I've just implemented four of these in a radio station. The announcers took to them straight away. And can I throw in the point that for a vast majority of users, in my estimation, that's what counts. It is. Dial up the track number, hit go. But you wouldn't necessarily buy this device if that's all you want to do. True. So what is it the things that th this does that's so much better than anything else? It'll play off a CD or it'll play off a DVD. So you can put files on a DVD. So for and anyone who's ever been running audio for a dance school show, and I know there's a few of you, yeah, um, and had the highly educated IT qualified professional dance school it's instructor they, shop with, with a the disc data disc full of MP3 files and you, go, here's my CD. You can't play it uh, on the CD player. This, this, this thing does that. So This is your cover every bass player. Absolutely. What you then find when you try to use it is that some of these it will do everything functions get away in, in the way of some of the others. So for example, it's got a shift button which allows you access to additional functions. It's got a very nice function that plays the end of a track. You just want mm -hmm. to hear what's at the end of the track. Sure. It's one button, but you've got to press the shift button first, then that button, then press the shift button again to take yourself out of that mode, or the next thing you do will change the pitch. Well, if you go to change track, you'll be changing pitch. Exactly. Right. So, so you Not know, good. like, why would you do it that way? Mm. It's got all the outputs that you would want. So it's got XLRs for analog, it's got an XLR for AES, it's got the RCA for SPDIF. And fixed and variable analog RCAs. Fixed and variable analog RCAs, and you can, you can program those. You know what it doesn't have? What? It doesn't have a USB hole. It doesn't either. No, it will only play digital files, like either off an optical C CD or DVD, or it'll play them from the LAN interface. Mm. So let's just talk about that for a second. You can create a directory structure. You can put files into that, and I think provided you don't have more than a thousand files in the structure, you can just navigate that from the cr front panel controls, um, pick up any of those that tracks. Up, you need to do that through the web interface. Well, to on set the up LAN to set up which directory you go to, mm. you have to set that up through the web interface, which means you need to be connected to a network in the first place. Which means you need to know the IP of the box. And you can only find that out from the front panel. You can't actually find that out any other way. You can't find it out by sniffing on the IP interface, and you can't find it out from the serial interface, which you're supposed to be able to use to now, control I, the box. I, I don't actually see why that's an issue, because if I'm setting an IP on a machine, I. I'm going to go to the front panel. To I me, that makes sense. I'll tell you where it comes It comes for me, and that's if you are using a number of these on serial interfaces and you plug your PC into the device, you want to be able to send a command and say, tell me who you are. And I this, know which one it is because I know device, which one I've plugged it, it into. It won't do that. And it also won't tell you, surprisingly, the number of tracks on a CD or, or a DVD that you've put in. So from the serial interface, you can tell it to go to a track that doesn't exist and you can't program it so that it won't do that. It's got some other little quirks that I noticed. Uh, if you turn the select track selection knob too quickly, it actually doesn't respond. So at the one time when that's, you're that's trying a, to do... No, nah, that's a standard thing for rotary encoders. And it shouldn't be because if you're in the studio and this is how you've got to get to track 70, on a multi-track CD, mm. and there are tracks, there are CDs that have it, like 100 tracks. I'm aware You're trying of this. to get there in a hurry. This thing actually works against you, which is like counterintuitive. Now you should be able to program up some of these functions. For example, um, the parallel interface on the back. You could make up uh, some additional buttons to go, go across the front to select next track, back track, or your end of track preview thing. Well, no, you can't do. That's not an option. 
they could have thought about making this a selectable option on the parallel interface and they didn't. They could have made it possible to program via the LAN interface. So if you've got two or three of these in a radio studio and they're all on the LAN, which in fact you'd, you'd like to do, why wouldn't you be able to send commands through the LAN? Mm. This is the, the sort of challenge that this device has. The designers have treated it as a computer. We know it's a computer because it takes 40 seconds from the time you press the start button until you can do anything, which includes ejecting the CD that you forgot to take out before you powered it down. So look, bottom line, the hardware is right, but software wise, with this release version, you're not entirely enthralled. And I would like to, th I'd like to think that Denon could actually um, put out a software drop that fixes most of these problems. It wouldn't be hard, but they haven't got it right in this one. If you want a device that will play uh, standard WAV, will play Windows Media, will play uh, Layer 3, will play Layer 2, and you want a device that can be interfaced, or you want a device that will play across a LAN, or you want uh, any number of the things that it does, this one does them all. Just be careful before you try and do them all at once.